All right, hi everybody, John Meadows here with Muscle and Strength. And this is part two of our three-part workout series. Hopefully you watched part one, which was a push workout. Today we're gonna to do part two, which is a pull workout, which is primarily gonna be our back training, our rear delt training, probably throw in some biceps. You always gotta train your biceps. So get ready for part two, let's get to work. First exercise, so we're going to do a row. I feel a little weird saying this, but it is called a Meadows row. Everybody named it that. This really is a great overall muscle builder for your entire back. I do use straps on these because we're gripping the thick part of the bar. So what we're going to do is we're going to row with a pronated grip like this. That allows you to use more rhomboid, rear delt, trap, as opposed to a neutral grip, which we're going to use on our next exercise. And think of your arms as just hanging attached to the bar. Don't pull with your biceps. What I want you to do is drive your elbows up. So just think about driving your elbow. Great contraction in your entire back. You got a good solid base and I'm driving my elbow. Also notice we're using a 25 pound plate. That's just gonna give you a little extra range of motion. So. On these, we like to do rep range, maybe eight to 12, kind of in that ballpark. The rep range isn't really that important. What is important is that you do hard sets. So whether you're doing eight or 12, I want your last rep or two to be brutally hard so you know you're getting enough good high quality reps in to make the set count. Okay, so after you've done three really tough sets of those Meadows rows, I want you to use the same piece of equipment. We're gonna do a one-arm barbell row. Now, your grip is gonna be different on this. So no more pronated grip. Now we're going with a neutral grip. The neutral grip will place a lot more emphasis on your lats. Again, you wanna have a nice base. Don't turn it into a balancing exercise. So other arm resting, flat back, and again, you're driving your elbow. Just drive your elbow. Squeeze your lat, stretch, squeeze, stretch, squeeze. Make sure you're careful that you don't start twisting like this when you row. We're not trying to train our waist, we're trying to train our lats. So drive with your elbow. Those are really tough. I think those have put more probably muscle on my lats than anything I've done. And those are as basic as it gets. Bend over and row. You're gonna do the same thing here. You're gonna do another three sets of like eight to 12. Your last rep or two is really, really difficult. Three hard sets of those Meadows rows and three hard sets of these one-arm barbell rows. You're gonna be breathing hard, but your lats are gonna be crazy pumped. Now we're gonna do a banded pull up or chin up, whatever you call them. I really, really like these. So when I originally started doing these, I was doing them because I had a little bit of tendonitis in my elbows. And by using the band, I noticed that it didn't quite hurt my elbows. But then as I was doing these, I noticed that I could get a little better range of motion. I could get really high up into the contraction and I could really steady my body with the band and use perfect form. And consequently, my lats got a lot sore. They were really sore. Great pump. So I kind of fell in love with this exercise. You're going to get a band, hook it up here. And what you're going to do is you're going to step into the band. So step into it. Take about a medium grip, about right here. Now look at your form on this. See how strict the form is? Ooh. 
When you do these, the band is assisting at the bottom and it's allowing you to get a little higher up into the range of motion. Now, what a lot of you probably have trouble with is just doing a chin period. So for those of you who can't quite do chin ups, this is a great way to get the benefits of the exercise and be able to do it. You could use a thicker band to help you more, or you could use a smaller band just to give you a little bit of help. It just depends on how strong you are, but you can pick the band to help you as much as you need help. So now we're gonna do a rear delt exercise. We did, we did get some rear delt work with the first row we did, but I like to do a little bit more isolation work on rear delts in addition to the rows. So I'm gonna use a time-tested, basic, basic exercise for rear delts, just as the rear delt, a lateral raise. This exercise has kind of come under fire. People saying it doesn't work your rear delts, which I just, I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> Um, so what I want you to do is I want you to grab two dumbbells and I want you to use a pronated grip, okay? So we're going to do them like this. You can still get your rear delts if you have a neutral grip. It'll just add a little side delt to it. We trained our side delts though on our push day, so we're going to do a little bit more isolation for your rear delt. I get a lot of questions about the formal knees, whether you want to have your shoulders uh, retracted or protracted. I like to actually, this is probably the opposite of what most people say, I like to have my shoulders hanging down so I can really flex with them as opposed to having my scapula back. That's okay, both ways are okay. I don't think one's right or wrong. I just personally like to hang a little bit more, protract my shoulders and really pivot with my rear delt. Don't be afraid of hitting really high reps on these two. The best success I've seen with these is sets of 20, 25, 30 reps. Just brutal reps on your rear delts. I think your rear delts actually grow pretty easy. I just think most people don't put a lot of work into them and as soon as they start burning, people quit. I always kind of looked at these as, you know, when the burning starts is when the set starts. So make sure, as always, when you're using lighter weight that you're going to failure. You really have to fatigue everything to get maximal activation and loading when you're using lighter weight. You've got to go to failure. So 20, 25 reps, burn like fire. You should drop the weight and just feel like, ah. So that's rear delts. So now we're gonna move on to biceps. Bicep training is a little bit more than bicep training to me. Um, I think there's a, a general kind of a lack of awareness of the brachialis muscle. Your brachialis sits between your bicep and tricep. It's actually, it's actually a more powerful elbow flexor than your biceps are. So I like to really prioritize my brachialis. When it's developed, it pushes your biceps out Gives them that nice pop to them. This exercise has probably become my favorite bicep exercise in the last six months. I really like doing these. I'm seated on a lap pull down here and I'm bracing my humerus, my upper arm bone, so I can really focus. So you're gonna get your brachialis, you're gonna get your bicep, and you're gonna get this muscle here, which is called your brachioradialis. That's kind of the manly muscle, I call it. You get this big manly looking muscle right here. So this is how these look. I like to use a good full range of motion on these, all the way down to really engage that lower bicep too. And all the way up. Knees burn. I typically do three sets here, anywhere from 12 to 15. I do these sets to failure. Super, super strict. Again, get a nice stretch, and then come up and get a nice contraction on these, good full range of motion. Squeeze your biceps while you're doing them. 
All right, guys, that was our pool workout. I hope you enjoyed it. We still have a leg workout to go through, and that'll be tomorrow. So we're gonna get some good food tonight, chow down, get a lot of fuel in us, because tomorrow we're gonna go hard on legs. Thanks, and as always, make sure you subscribe down below.